Let's learn in this Lightboard session how to implement a landing zone for Azure Container Apps. Light, please. Oh, thank you. For enterprises that use a landing zone, they would typically use the enterprise scale. So they have an existing infrastructure and an existing Azure resources that uses and respects the best practices recommended by Azure. So they would have that enterprise scale implemented within the hub and spoke model. So they would have a hub, which is a hub a network. Within that hub, they would have the networking resources like an Azure firewall in order to filter the traffic. And then they would have also an Azure bastion to allow VMs or to allow to log in to uh, VMs within the network. They would have also DNS and private uh, uh, DNS zones in order to resolve domain names. And maybe they would also have a gateway to uh, provide on-premise access to that uh, uh, network. Now when you have a new application and you want to implement it as a landing zone attached to this hub or to this enterprise scale uh, platform, I would actually create a spoke network. Each landing zone would have its own spoke ideally. So for the landing zone, I would have a second resource. Let's say this is the spoke. And within that spoke, we would find mainly our container apps. First, we would have the environment. So the environment that's like the app service plan that will host the container apps. And within an environment, I can have one or multiple container apps. So let's say here I have container app number one, and then I have a second container app number two, because within container app environment, you can deploy multiple containers. This would be number two. And at this stage, the first concern for the security team within an organization is that they would say, I want to have all the egress traffic or the outbound traffic from those container apps to go through the Azure firewall. Typically, our container apps will connect to external resources. It's not an, a standalone application. Maybe it will need to connect to the ACR to get the images. It needs to connect to external REST API it will go to connect to the Git repository. Maybe it will go to connect to some AI uh, resources. So any outbound connection, it should go through the Azure firewall. So we need to have that outbound that should go through the Azure firewall. And here it will be uh, controlled, filtered, and then it's up to the Azure firewall to decide whether that traffic could leave the firewall or not. And this is a scenario that we can enable today using container apps, and that's using the UDR mode. So I can enable the UDR mode within the container apps environment, and then I can go to create a route table. And within that route table, I go to enforce sending all the traffic to the firewall private IP address. A second security concern for the security team is the resources that the container apps will connect to. Let me explain. So container apps will use some other Azure resources. It will use, it will need to use, for example, a key vault in order to store secrets. Then it will go to connect to ACR to get the images. And then maybe it will need to connect also to an Azure storage account, to Cosmos DB, and those resources, they all provide by default public endpoints. And of course, for security reasons, we don't, we don't want to use or to expose our services on public endpoint over the internet to anyone. So we want to secure those services. So we can do that either using service endpoint or also using private endpoints. And with private endpoint, I can go to disable that public URL or public FQDN or public endpoint, and then map my, my service to the network where I have container apps and that way, or I can do that using the private endpoint. I would have here a private IP within that network. And I'll do the same thing here for all these resources. They all support private endpoint, also for Cosmos DB. A third security concern is how container apps could connect and authenticate and authorize to these services. So container apps actually can use the managed identity. So for that, it will leverage the managed identity with the airbag roles in order to get access to these resources. So each, actually each container app could use one or multiple managed identities in order to get access. And that's in combination with the airbag roles. The fourth concern here are our users. So our users will be using their client applications. Let's say here they will be using a very modern browser like this one. 
sorry, not that one. They will be using modern browsers like Edge in order to get access to my uh, container apps right here. So you still can expose container apps through a public endpoint that is managed by Azure, but to add more security, you would use a load balancing solution like either Azure Application Gateway, where we can go here to add an App Gateway resource within the same network, that App Gateway will get its route to the container app uh, private IP. And because that App Gateway will be using a public endpoint like a public uh, IP, for example, then this client could connect to that uh, public IP. So App Gateway is one solution to expose our services through uh, the ingress. Actually here, of course, we would have the ingress uh, configuration for that uh, App Gateway, but that is a regional solution. If you are looking for a, a global load balancing solution, then that would be actually using front door. With front door, you can create the resource and because by default it is not attached to the uh, VNet, so you can use the private link service in order to connect to that uh, uh, subnet. So this way it would connect to that PLS and then from there it will find its uh, way to the, to the right container app uh, instance. And those are two solutions for connecting and exposing the container app. And both are secure because they also provide the WAF feature, the web application firewall to protect the incoming traffic. Great, so at the end, we have secured the ingress traffic, the egress traffic, and then using the managed identity, we secure the connection to other Azure resources, and we connect privately to these resources. At the end of this video, I would recommend you go through the container app landing zone implementation that is available as an open source project in GitHub, where you would find the BICEP implementation of the, all of this infrastructure and also the Terraform implementation. Thank you.